Lord for saving me. Come on, I don't know about you, church, tonight, but I came to bless the Lord, amen. So when we declare, see, how can I forget? Oh, we're believing. Amen. We're believing that he brought us out. So we say, how can I forget? How can I forget what you've done for me? You are faithful. You're declaring you a victory. Never say, again. what you've done for me. You are faithful. Oh, you never fail me. Never yeah. fail me to me. And I'm grateful. grateful. Can you give a shout to the Lord? Hey. I lift my hands to you. All together, can we say? I lift my hands to you. Yeah. We say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the King of Kings. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing it out to the Hallelujah. In harmony we say Hallelujah. 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 We say Hallelujah.
God, is yours tonight, Lord. Oh, we worship you, God. We give you the praise, God, for you and you alone are worthy, Lord. Oh, we cry out to you, God, for just an ounce of your presence, the presence that breaks the chain of bondages. Oh, the, the ounce that begins to harden and begins to soften the heart, the hard hearts here tonight, oh God. Lord, we need that ounce of your presence, oh Lord. We all sing. And this is my desire to work. Oh uh -huh. 
you should have been dead today. Some of you should have OD'd a long time ago. Some of you should have been dead in that grave a long time ago. But no one can take your worship today. You have a reason to worship tonight. You have a reason to breathe. I don't know about you, but I know there's some testimonies. I know there's some heavy testimonies. Can worship you for me. For everything that you've done for us, Lord. For all the things you've done for me. No one can take my worship. No one can worship you for me. That's why we say, here's our worship, Lord. Here's my worship. Just lift up your hands right there where you're at. Come on, from the front to the back, just lift up your hands. And right there where you're at, just begin to say, Jesus, I need you. Come on, Victor, down there where you're at. Come on, it don't matter how far you might be. You might be here tonight and say, I don't know what's going on. But all it takes is a moment for the Holy Spirit to captivate your heart. Come on, Victory Outreach, Victory Home, lift your hands up and just begin to call on the name of Jesus. Come on, just begin to call on the name of Jesus. Come on, you might be serving in a ministry, but right there, just begin to stir it up right for the blood. Oh, we worship you, God. Oh, we give you honor, God. We give you glory, God. Oh, we we come before you and we thank you Lord Father we sense your presence here we sense the Holy Spirit at work 
And Father, I pray, God, here tonight, God, God, that you would move the way you want to move. Father, we thank you for being great, God. We thank you for being sovereign, God. Father, you're always true to who you are, oh God. And Father, and Father, here tonight, God, I pray, Lord, God, that above everything, God, that you would receive all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. And in the name of Jesus, Victory Outreach says, amen, and praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a good hand of praise. Come on, I said, give him a good Give me a U.S. Who loves the A.V.? Who died for us? But who's coming back? Come on, give it up for Jesus right here in the house of God. Praise the Lord. And we want to thank you for coming out to Victory Outreach on a Wednesday night. And we want to thank you for coming to the shift service on behalf of Pastor Mike and Sister Christina Gonzalez. And if you're tuning in right now on YouTube, we want to thank you for tuning in right now. Come on, give it up for our viewers that are tuning in. Some elbow, and we'll be back with some announcements. Praise the Lord. Some would say Friday. And, uh, how many guys know that we're already in the month of July? Come on, somebody. Isn't that crazy? We're in the month of July already, coming up soon. And so what we like to do in the gang is we like to do themes. Somebody say theme. And last, do we have any witnesses tuning in right here on YouTube? Come on, some young adults and all students, junior high and high school, and to our Friday gang service, our God's anointed fellowship. Come on, give the Lord a good hand of praise for that. And we've been doing this every year. The way it's going to be a little bit different is we're not going to have our community table as we usually do. So the church is going to be providing hot dogs, hamburgers, and water. But for you guys, the church, or all of you guys know that we're trying to do everything with clean me, my family, everyone. We're all family here. And so here today, we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that we abide by all those regulations but still have a good time of fellowship. Can somebody say amen? And we're going to have a good time right there. So you got to do to have a good time. Can somebody say amen? Praise the Lord. And I also want to make mention that this Sunday, our 9, had a lot of waivers right here. And right there, you can register for the 9 a.m. or for the 11 a.m. And a special announcement is for the 11 a.m. service, we have something called New Gen. And what New Gen is, is New Gen is our junior high ministry. And so at a, we got something for everyone in the family. And we're so excited to see what God is doing. But at this time, I want to encourage you to turn your attention right here to the screen you can stay tuned in for some video announcements this october we're coming together preparing for one purpose a united we can effort by passion courage hope faith and inch.org we are in it to make a change god's people that's the place that i have called you because Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many guys came ready to starting in verse 6? And the Bible reads as follows. It says, And flask of very costly fragrant oil. And she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? Somebody say waste. Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work. Someone say a good work. A good work for me. For you have the, for you have the poor with you always, but me you do, not always, you, you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, Someone say the whole world. Come on, someone say the whole world. That this woman have a little bit of flashbacks of some of my family members. Come on, somebody. 
But has anybody ever looked to give into that church? Come on, I'm pulling covers right here tonight. Come on, somebody. I remember growing up, I hear people say, I'm not going to pay for that uh, minister's shoes or little things like that. And I was reading this, and I began to get flashbacks of things that I've heard growing up when people put a lot of money. Come on, somebody. How many of you guys know it's not just easy to give something that's worth value? Come on, somebody. She could have very easily thought like the disciples and say, oh, I can go sell this and come on, somebody, cash out. I can pawn it. I can do whatever I want. But how many of you guys know that she did something symbolic? Come on now. She anointed Jesus with it. And I think a lot of times what happens is a lot of people will have their own mindset. They'll have their own perception on things when it comes to giving to the Lord. But how many of you guys know it's different when Jesus has done something for you? Come on, somebody. How many of you guys know that when Jesus has done something for you, it don't matter what somebody has to say about you giving to the Lord. All you know is that you were lost, but now you're found. I wish I had a witness here tonight. All you know that, man, you were stuck in sin, bound to the same old habitual habits, but all of a sudden with God and the blood of Jesus, you've been redeemed, you've been made new. All of a sudden, you're a new creation in Christ. All of a sudden, you walk with your head held high. Why? Because you're not who you used to be. All of a sudden, you got a new identity. All of a sudden, you're a joint heir with Christ. I wish I had a witness here tonight. How many of you guys know that when you got Jesus in your life, you're on the winning side? And when Jesus has done something for you, you can't help but to give. Come on, somebody. How many of you guys know it's just, it's just who God is? God is naturally a giver. And when you begin to, it's just something that happens. You begin to get the traits of God, and all of a sudden, you can't help but to give. And here tonight, I'm, I'm passionate, I'm excited, and I pray that you're stirred here tonight to know that, listen, God has so much in store for those who love him. And listen, if you love him, I want to encourage you to give here tonight. Give to the Lord with a cheerful heart and watch what he's able to do. People could say all they want, but they can't take away the life-changing experience, come on, of the presence of God, of the blood of Jesus. Come on, someone give the Lord a good hand of praise. Come on, they can't take that away. And here tonight, I pray that you're encouraged. And if you're tuning in, I pray that you're encouraged to give to the Lord right here tonight. And you can give by way of envelope if you're here in person. And right there online, you should be seeing a QR code and a QR code code coming up right here if you'd like to use it or go to vopomdo.com and scroll to the bottom and tap on the heart but let's give to the Lord right here tonight amen but let's pray first heavenly father God I come before you Lord father I thank you God I thank you God for everything that you've done for me personally and even us God Father, we are sitting in a life, God. Father, we stand here grateful, God. And as we prepare this offering to you, God, I pray that we would give cheerfully and that you would receive it with joy, God. We're thankful to be here in your presence. Have your way here tonight. And in the name of Jesus, we all say amen. And praise the Lord as the baskets are passed. You can take a moment right there to give online. Praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a good hand of praise right there where you're at. And right there where you're at, I want to ask that you stand. Let's all stand. Come on, ask him, are you ready? Ask somebody, ask him, are you ready? Praise the Lord. We came down to the part of the service where we get a word from the Lord, and I believe that you're in right here for a treat. And if you're tuning in right now, I pray that you just put all attention and all focus right here on, on this live stream so that you can get a word. Come on, how many guys know that God has a word for you here tonight? And time is going by so quick, I feel like I just announced him last month. Come on, somebody. But this is one of our ministers right here, and he's a part of the family of Victory Outreach, and he has a beautiful family of his own. And this is a man of God who God is going to use, I believe, greatly right here tonight. So help me welcome up Minister Sam McNutt as he comes up right here. Oh, come on. Give the Lord a great hand of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be here on tonight. It is a, um, how many of you had a pretty rough week? Amen. I'm glad it's not just me, amen. That makes me feel a whole lot better, and amen, because I, I tell you, it's been one of those weeks, but I know that God is able. I know God is able, and I'm, and I'm convinced that it's only that we experience and go through 
that God is beginning to develop and open us. God, tonight was the hell of my life. Uh, Sister Christina Gonzalez, uh, I, I thank you. Uh, every time I get behind this holy uh, desk, this holy pulpit, it's just a reminder of how great God is and how compassionate pastors, all the ministers in the house on tonight. I thank God for my work that's going to speak to the hearts of his people. Because most certainly it spoke to my heart, amen. And I was sharing with my brother on the way to work this morning how uh, when I just was sharing with him how God is beginning to really move and, and how things are beginning to be revealed and, and how God's love and compassion is beginning to show itself above all things. And, and he began to remind me for nothing, not wanting anything, but just wanting God. Amen. So I give God the praise, honor, and glory on tonight. As you remain standing, I'm going to go ahead and get into the word of God. I will be reading from along with me. How many of you believe that God has a, how many believe that God has a word for you tonight? Amen. Praise God. Let us read together. It says, now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom sought to, who sought to bring in and lay before him and let him down with his bed out into the mist before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto him, man, who speaks blast? He answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is it easier to but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins? He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go home. And immediately he rose up before them, taking up what he had been laying on, and departed to his own house glorifying God and they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with Lord uh, Father God in the mighty name of Jesus Lord God I thank you on tonight I ask God for your preaching power on tonight Father God let there be a strength Father God and a boldness Father God that comes forth out of your manservant Father God that will touch the minds and hearts of your people, Father God, and produce change. And let there be a knowledge of understanding, God. Let your comp to get to that place in you where I may be saved or I may be healed or I may be set free, God. And God, we thank you tonight. We give you the praise, God, the honor, and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, thank God and amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a word spoke to me. Uh, but I want to turn your attention to who was present at this seminar, this meeting. The Bible declares on this day he was teaching, and there were Pharisees, Pharisees, member of the Jewish sect, distinguished by their strict obedience or observance of the traditional and written law. They were commonly held as being superior in terms of their knowledge and their sanctity. That is to say that they had the statue or quality of being holy, sacred, and saintly. The Bible declares that they came from every town in Galilee, Judah, to their meeting, to the seminar. For the Galileans offered better agricultural and fishing resources where they came from, from their numerous mountains and territories in Judea, of Judea, of Judah making the wealth of neighbors as country cousins for their lack of Jewish sophistication. The Judeans' opinions was that the Galileans were lack in their obedience or observance to proper ritual. But however, there was one thing that was shared among them, and that is that their belief that they had some they had a greater knowledge or understanding of the law as it was written. There sit a bunch of scribes and theologians sitting at the feet of of the Lord was present to heal them. Somebody say set up. 
It's about to be a setup. I want you to stay with me on tonight. See, Jesus never fails to seize an opportunity to teach. Every time Jesus sit down with his disciples, or with people, his whole thing was to share with them or teach them something that they may not have known before or gave them clarity so they had a greater understanding of what they might have. They had the opportunity, to, and Luke simply described him as a paralyzed man. Hallelujah. I love it when God's word points out the present condition before he reveals his glory. It is important for us to raise. He was outside feet of Jesus. He understood he needed something that only Jesus could provide. No one else could do what he was requiring. No one else could allow, but he had to get to Jesus. To get to the place of Jesus, especially when you come through a journey or you've come through something, there's always be ready to receive what it is that you're asking God for. It says many of which required some assistance. Unlike the others already in the presence of Jesus, he came with the heart that needed to be healed. He, he came with the condition, the ability to get to that place of healing. I want you to imagine this if you would. Oh, my God. How we sometimes want so much to be healed, how we want so much to be set free, only to get to the place, understand, or we, we may not have all the tools or we may doubt ourselves, but we get to that place. My God, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I may need some help. Need some help. Now, some might not have the ability to identify, at least not in the way of someone having a physical handicap. He said this, it is a person or a part of a body partially are wholly incapable of movement. Understand that even though you might not have the handicap, you still lack movement. You're reserved to a place of inability, not able to perform even and uh, maybe they haven't been through what you've been through. But because of this man's condition, in order for him to move, to be moved, or to be positioned, required less of his own abilities and more from those that chose to assist him. I want you to hear the word of God where there is no movement. And you're crying out, hey, I, I may need some help. I'm free, but I, I can't get to that place. Are you willing to? Render me some assistance. Are you, are you willing to help me out? Oh, any help. You need, to yeah, you need to surround yourself with some people that think like you, that want what you want just as bad as you want it. Some radical folks that's not afraid, amen, to be there when you need them. That believe, oh, come on, somebody. I can imagine these friends, they definitely would be considered as quitters. Many would have said, man, how many people is trying to get, I don't think we can do it. No, no, I need some radical VO believers that's willing to help me get to the next level. Except no type of foe takes to ensure my, I keep pressing on, keep, and I can see them even thinking in their minds, uh, there's got to be an eternal, uh, uh, alternative route. I can see them searching around the temple looking for a way in. Not willing to give up because of the obstacles. I can see them 
going around and around thinking, how can we get in? How can we make this happen? But know this, it was only when they looked up that they saw their opportunity. I know I'm speaking to someone here today. Many times we walk around with our head down in defeat because the very interest, amen, that we were looking for was blocked. So we turned away, amen, in defeat saying, it must not have been for me. It must have not been God's will. But I want to encourage somebody tonight to know there's many ways, amen, if you don't give up, you just got to look up. You got to look up. The Bible says, look to the hills, which cometh thy help, for thy help comes from the Lord. I don't know about you, but I need some friends that's not afraid to tear the roof off and lure me into the presence of the Lord. I need some friends that's dedicated like that, that's committed like that. And I know you need some friends like that too. But look at the support the friends had. I know that the position that each one took to lure him in to see Jesus. The Bible said that they lowered him down with his bed. I want you to catch this. There were four men all assigned to get him to Jesus. Could you imagine the level of coordination it must have taken to assure that he didn't fall? Oh, y'all should have got happy right there. Imagine the coordination it took for them to lower him down to see Jesus. They had to have great communication. They had to have a, a, the same mindset. Because they each had responsibility. If one of them would have not done a man according to what they were called to do, it may have been subject for the man to fall. I know it's an interesting illustration, but I want you to know that we need, amen, some men that are on one accord, that understands and knows, amen, that this thing I got to do, I got to do it, we got to do it together. It's not about my four and no more. It's about all of us and how God has positioned us to be that person, to be that, that, that instrument that's able to grab hold, amen, and support, amen. Grab hold, amen, and be on one accord. Not afraid, amen, to do what's needed to do, be done. The Bible says, when he saw their faith. Oh, yeah. The Bible says, when he saw their faith, when, when he saw their commitment, when, when he saw that the, the, the extent that they went through to get their friends there, when he saw that, when he saw how committed they were, when he saw that, he said to the man, your sins are forgiven. Let me just go back to that because I don't think you got it. After he saw the faith of those that dared to do what many would have said was too hard. After he saw how committed they were to see their friend healed. He said to the man, your sins are forgiven. Somebody says, still a setup. This immediately draw attention to those that came to witness, that did not come to witness a miracle, but came to ensure that the law was followed to the T. How I many you know everybody's not there to see your miracle? Yeah, yeah some, some of us are there, some folks are there just to make sure you don't mess up. 
Make sure you don't screw up. Make sure you don't say the wrong things. But they're certainly not there to see the manifestation of your miracle. That's not why they came. After he had perceived the thoughts, he replied, which is as easier to say that your sins are forgiven or to say rise up and walk? Or rise up, in some translations, says, rise up and go. See, understand that your sins are forgiven wouldn't have meant very much to that crowd. See, anyone can say to anyone else, thy sins are forgiven. And nobody would have think any wiser into the day of judgment would have been demonstrated for all eternity whether or not the eternal punishment had been avoided. Are you hear what I'm saying today? Anyone could have said that. But that you know that the Son of Man, this is Jesus' reply, but that you know, will know that the Son of Man has the power on earth to forgive sins. He has the power to do what needs to be done immediately. Then Jesus commanded the man who was paralyzed to rise up, to be assured of the strength that once believed not attainable was now present within his members. The very thing, amen, that he had asked for, the very thing that he had prayed for, amen, was now had been restored, had been given unto him in his members. He said, take up your bed. Take up your bed. The very thing that once confined you, the very thing that in past times supported your condition, it's now being carried by you. I want you to think about that. That's how great Jesus, that's how great God is. The very thing, amen, that was holding you captive, the very thing, amen, that you needed, amen, is your support system. That you thought, amen, that you would never get rid of, that you would never be able to overcome. God would have you, amen, be the one that's carrying it and not it supporting you. Oh, y'all need to get happy about this on tonight. The very thing, amen, that has caused you to go to the place of everything that's caused you to go to that place and seek whomever can show you or able to illustrate to you what it is that I need to do. So forgive me if my gate's a bit different than yours. Because my healing, amen, I'm sure this man said, look, my healing came with much struggles. So forgive me, amen, if my gate's a little bit different than yours, if my, if my strut is a little bit different than yours. Forgive me. Forgive me. That my strut or my walk is more defined than some that have the ability to walk since birth. Forgive me for my walk. When Jesus does something to you no man can, that no man can do, it makes you want to shout. It makes you want to dance. It, it makes you want to tell the world, amen, just how good and how effective God is. When you once was walking with your head down and your, and your shoulders slumped over, now you walk with a bit of confidence. Because now you understand, amen, that it was not you. The very thing that you asked for was impossible for you to do yourself. But God was able to do it through you, through your commitment, through your steadfastness. You didn't give up. You didn't quit. You didn't turn away, amen, from an opportunity to get total healing. 
Sure, my walk is going to be a little bit different. These legs haven't been used as much. So now I'm getting the full use out of them. Oh, y'all, understand. When Jesus does for, something for you that no man could do, and if I can have the praise team come, it makes you want to shout. It makes you want to dance. And it makes others take notice. Wow, what happened to him? What's going on? It makes others take notice of what God has done through you. So here tonight, and at home, I can relate, or some of you maybe can relate to the urgency for the need to rise up. Some of us may understand the need for the urgency to rise up. Many of us have been in this position, paralytic, for too long. We need to get to Jesus. Our movement has stopped. Our, our faith has stopped. Our, our prayer has stopped. The very things, amen, that we used to do, amen, we don't do anymore. We've become dormant, amen, many times even in our walk. But God is telling us tonight, it's time to rise up. It's time to rise up. Some of you may say, but, but, but I can't do it in and of myself. I, I need some help. I need some assistance. You don't understand what I've been through. You don't understand, amen, what they said about me. I'm totally depleted even now of my faith. God is saying, rise up. Rise up. Now is the time to rise up. Maybe be saying that I need to be lifted up. I need to be lifted up. I need some help. It comes by a great need for God to be lifted up in our lives. For the word declares that if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto thee. Some of us need to be lifted on tonight. How many of you out there know and understand that it is by the strength and power of God that you're able to overcome any struggle, anything that you may be going through, anything, even those that are out there tonight. Understand that God has heard, amen. God, amen, know that you were at the door knocking, amen. And we, he knew that your intentions was to get in because you needed the healing. You needed someone, amen, to know that you were there. And many times, amen, we fall subject, we fall prey, amen, to our own thoughts. And that's why we need some help. That's why we need some radical friends that's not afraid to come where we are. Even to bring us to that place of deliverance. Bring us new hope. Bring us a greater understanding that we're not alone. Some of us just need to know that we're not alone as this. We're not walking this walk by ourselves. Amen. God has some, appointed some people, amen, that, that wants to help you. Wants to see you get to that place of full healing, of full deliverance. And the last thing that I want to make mention of here, as I wrote as a footnote, I said the true forgiveness of sin was not for the man that had made up his mind and his heart, focused on the one that had the power and was able to provide healing and deliverance. 
but it was for those who sit at the presence of the position of perceived power and judgment, never realizing that the same was available to them. That was the true sad part about it. Those very people that, that were in the presence of God had the same opportunity to be, because the Bible declared that Jesus was there to heal them. Sometimes we get so uppity. Sometimes, you know, we think that we know it all. And we miss the opportunity when Jesus has provided an opportunity for us to come into his presence. Oh, hallelujah. Everyone standing. Everyone standing on tonight. I truly just thank God for his love and for his mercy. And I know that God's word, amen, would never return to him, boy, but it would accomplish that in what it was sent out to do. So I know the word of God spoke to the hearts of his people on tonight. Now what I'm asking is that what are you going to do with the word, amen, that you received? Are you going to take it like those three men? Are you going to carry it? Are you going to present it to your, your king, your, your Lord of Lords? And say, God, here he is or here I am. Do what needs to be done in me. I need to be healed. I need to be set free. I need to know, God, the love and compassion that you have for me. I need to know you, God, for who you are. I'm tired of being uh, uh, immobile. I want to move again. I want to live again in you, God. I can't do it, God, unless I have some help, unless I have some assistance. If that's you tonight, just raise your hand, even at home. Saying, God, I... I refuse to give up. I refuse to quit. Whatever it takes, God, whatever it takes. If it takes me kicking down the door, amen, I got to get into you. If it takes me ripping back the roof, God, I got to get into you. And I thank God that I got some friends, amen, that's not going to leave me, amen, at the door. But they're going to ensure, amen, that I get the opportunity to get to the place where I'm able to be fully healed oh thank you on tonight thank you on tonight I want to pray for those that are yet watching at home as I said in the beginning of this message that this being a trying week for me a lot of things have been going on the, yeah, yeah, the, the enemy's been busy. But my word tells me that where, where evil abound, grace much more abound. And Paul said that your grace your grace, God, is, is sufficient. It's enough to get me to that place I need to be. Your, your grace is enough. It's sufficient. It's enough. Oh, God, we just thank you now, God. We ask, God, that your, your hand of protection, Father God, will cover those, Father God, that are yet watching. We ask, God, that there be a, a tugging at the heart, oh, God, tonight, God. Let them know, God, that you are God, and beside you there is none other. The very breath, oh God, the very strength that you've given to the legs of the paralytic man, oh God, you also can give unto them. You can strengthen them even in their minds tonight, God. You can let them know, God, that it's not over until you said it's over, God. That they can call on your name, oh God, and you will answer, God. They can knock on the door, God, and it shall be opened unto them, God. Let them be confident, oh God, even now, God. 
that no weapon, O oh God, formed against them shall have the power to do what it was intended to do. It will not prosper. It would not see, O oh my God. It come to pass. And God, we forever give you the praise, O oh God. We'll give you the glory, God. We'll, we'll give you the honor, Father. We, we'll lift up our situations even above, oh God, our own ability. But God, most of all, God, will give you the praise. We thank you now, God. We ask, God, that you would cover us with your blood. Seal us, oh God, tonight. Give us reassurance. Give us to know that you are the God that healeth thee. And God, we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name. Come on, let the church say, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, man, give the Lord a great hand to praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, how many guys thought that was awesome right here? Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, this concludes our service. And just have a couple of more announcements that we'd like to share. Don't forget we got gang service on Friday at 7.30 p.m. Also, this Saturday, the 4th of July barbecue is starting at 8 p.m. Some will say 8 p.m. There's still a little, um, still you still see like some sunlight, but it's going down. Perfect time for fireworks. And we also want to encourage you. We got a firework booth. How many guys seen our firework booth? Come on, somebody. I want to encourage you. If you're going to buy anywhere, buy right here. Uh, we only have it pretty much until the 4th, I believe. So it's and they're selling pretty quick actually so there's a lot of places that i've seen kind of closed and i'm not too sure why but ours is open so i want to encourage you to get that and then don't forget register this sunday especially all the parents do we have any parents any parent any proud parents come on somebody if you're a parent i want to let you know to make sure you register early because that kids game fills up super super quick so registration is now open but with that being said god bless you thank you for tuning in those on youtube and we'll see you live sunday morning at 11 a.m. Praise the Lord. Also, one more quick announcement. Don't forget, tomorrow morning we have uh, the Grab and Go uh, breakfast and lunch right here. It's a drive-in. So you just drive up and you tell them how many children you have. And you can come right here to get some breakfast and some lunch for all your children. God bless you guys.